Hello everybody, I'm Hartmut from Jülich, working since many, many years in Catherine's lab. And I would like to give you together with Claude from McGill an overview of the current status of this joint work on Big Brain 2. Obviously, the VD reconstruction of a big crane at a resolution of 20 microns isotropic requires not only a considerable amount of time and power, but also a lot of competence and experience in many areas of modern image processing and can therefore not be carried out by one institute only. And in that spirit, this joint work will also serve as a preliminary work on the 20 micron 3D reconstruction of a future big brain free, which will be needed for the final one micron reconstruction. Well, as for big brain two, the data were collected and curated in Jülich. The manual corrections uh, have all taken place in Jülich so far. First 3D reconstructions at different resolution levels have also been computed in Jülich, but require further work, at, especially for the higher resolution models, especially due to an insufficient in, in homogeneity correction. Well, Claude has acquired a great competence on, on this topic, but this is also very close connected with the 3D reconstruction, and therefore a new, new 3D reconstruction will also be calculated in Montreal with the already completely repaired data from Jülich. The final data can then be visualized again with Atelier 3D, and the data will then be made available uh, for the community. So let's go to Big Brain 2. Big Brain 2 is from a male who died at, uh, of bronchial pneumonia in 1994 at the age of 30 years, which is pretty young for a postmodern brain. The postmodern time was about 25 hours. In 2004, the formalin fixed brain was scanned in Jülich uh, with a Siemens Sonata 1.5 Tesla MR scanner at a resolution of 0.5 millimeters. Preparation, section, and histological processing took place in Düsseldorf at the Cecilia Vogt Institute, headed by Karzelis at that time, and resulted in a total of 7,676 cell body stained coronal sections at a thickness of 20 microns. For the digitizing of the stains histological sections, a flatbed scanner with a maximum resolution of 2400 dpi, which corresponds to 10 microns, was used on the one hand, and various models of the Huron tissue scope scanner, which provide a maximum resolution of approximately one micron on the other. The use of two different scanners is, of course, not the best, especially since the flatbed scanners, although originated from the semi professional area, does not fully meet the requirements of a scientific device. However, it has historical reasons. When the digitization of the section started, the tissue scope scanners were not yet available uh, or not available in the desired quality, so that the sections were rescanned at a higher resolution many, many, many years later in some cases. However, practically, nonlinear deviations between the data sets from coming from the 20 micron to the one micron world may be present in some sections. However, since the 3D reconstruction have always been based on the 20 micron images so far, this should always keep in mind when analyzing the data at a one micron resolution level. However, this will not play a role for the future big brain free as only tissue scope scanners will be used uh, for scanning these sections. When we directly compare big brain two and big brain three, we find out that we can see that the very young age of 30 years of big brain two is practically as particularly striking for a postmodern brain. As in addition, in contrast to Big Brain 1, no infarcts have been observed so far. In Big Brain 1, there's one in the subcortical region on the right side. Furthermore, one can see less damage caused by the dissection. And also the staining of the subcortical nuclei has more contrast so that the overall quality of the one micron data is significantly better than uh, in, uh, in, in a Big Brain 1. However, there's a significant widening of the posterior hemispheric gap between the postmortem data and the NMR data set, which has a major impact on the 3D reconstruction since the MR data set is used as a reference. I think Claude will come later to this point. Well, although the histological processing steps were, of course, all carried out with a lot of experience know how, the digitizing histological checksums show a large number of artifacts. In order to record them both quantitatively and qualitatively, you have divided them into three groups, staining artifacts, side on the left side, in the middle damages without loss and damages with loss. Within the group, we have also distinguished between minor, medium, and major artifacts. Well, the result of a manual classification, which is shown in detail 
uh, in the diagram showed that about 3,300, so about 42 of all histological sections had medium to even severe artifacts. In addition, it has shown that artifacts often extends over several constitutive sections, which is, had, which is of great importance for the repairs to be made. However, it is clear for a good 3D reconstru reconstruction at the highest resolution level, most of these uh, damages have to be repaired. Well, for the repair, the repair of one section turned out to be a very time consuming step, which in practice required considerable um, manual interaction. Therefore, we use a multi-resolution approach, repairing at a resolution of 20 micron first every 16 sections and then going up to finally every fifth section. To support the repair as best as possible, we use Section Editor, a program that includes a number of fundamental imaging processing tools, but in addition to the repaired image, also logging information of all processing steps are stored on disk. This allows both accurate provenance tracking and possibly the, the application of the log files to the corresponding one micron sections. An evaluation of the log files of the, repaired, of the repairs of every fifth sections results in an average manual time of approximately 45 uh, minutes per section for an experienced user and in total of approximately 1,001 1 hour working hours for the repairment of every fifth section. Therefore, the complete manual repairment of all 6,676 sections would acquire about 507,000 hours, which corresponds to a working time of about three years full time for one person. It should be clear that uh, everything must be done to reduce this, uh, the time of the repairment as much as possible. Well, in the next slide, we see a concrete example of a repair. In the section, a larger part is missing on the upper left. For correction, the, rough, the area was roughly marked and saved as a ROI. Externally, the immediately neighboring sections, which fortunately were not damaged in this area, were transformed nonlinear non -linear to the section. And with the help of the defined mass, the missing part was then copied into the gap. As a rule, the better fitting part was chosen. In the case shown on the right side of a displaced area, it was marked in the section, moved to fit, and still remaining gaps were filled with simply copy and paste operations. Thus, in both cases, only the manual filled gaps are artificial, but the shifted or copy part is not. Averaging over several constitutive neighboring sections, on the other hand, would be artificial over the entire area. Therefore, most of the operations was done at this level in plane. However, in order to speed up the processes of the very time consuming manual corrections that was previously carried out to the extent on every fifth sections for the repair of the intermediate sections, an automatic process method was implemented, which builds up on the already completely repaired fifth level sections. In the example shown, the unrepaired original section 4006 and 4011 were transformed nonlinear to section 4008. The, ca um, the calculated transmate, sorry, the calculated transformation was applied to the repaired section and then used to correct the section 4008. Thus, in contrast to the previous step, only the nearest fully repaired sections is used rather than the immediately adjacent section. However, the approach is very complex and works well so far only for sections that are not too badly damaged. Manual control of the result is necessary and additional manually repairing cannot be ruled out. As a result, this step has not yet been completed furthermore, uh, furthermore so far only the sections from the flatbed scanner have been processed. For the next version, however, the downscaled one micron section will be used here also. However, the sections which have been completely repaired so far have then been copied to Montreal for further processing. Okay, the data are transferred uh, to Montreal. Uh, then he said the first step was the, con the, the, the conversion of the repaired sections. Uh, in Jülich, we are also processing PNG image, and in Montreal, they are working with Mink, Mink image. So the first step was the, the conversion of the repaired sections to Mink. Uh, the general, the general uh, goal was to, to align. Uh, to MRI at a resolution of 100 micron. Uh, he used the nonlinear vertical section to section alignment of MRI, MRI aligned sections. Uh, oops, sorry. sorry. I don't know what's going on. Something is going wrong here. 
What's going on here? Okay. Well, he did a resampling of all sections at 20 microns. He did an optical balancing of intensity and he wanted to use uh, Atelier 3D for visualization. Oh, sorry, so, so, so. So first he did an in-pen resampling at 100 micron, then he repeat 10 iterations. Uh, first, he stacked the sections in coronal direction. He did a volume metric registration of stacked volume to MI. He used six parameters, a fine transformation gradually to nonlinear. He did a 2D registration of histology sections to corresponding section to sliced MRI. Then he did a resampling of the 2D aligned sections, and then he did the optical balancing. On the left side, you can see the results. On the top is the, the, the histology. On the left, on the, on the bottom, you see the MRI data set. Uh, in the middle, you see some corresponding sections. A special problem is the interhemisphere gap correction. Oh, come on, hold on. So to correct the interhemisphere gap correction, he did a two D section to section registration of left hemisphere only in occipital pole to obtain the correct scales. Then he did a section to section position averaging of histology on floating right hemisphere. On the left side, you see the result of the first iteration and on the, on the right side, the, the results of the 10th iteration step. As you can see here, here's the problem with the interhemispheric gaps is shown on the, on the left image on the, on, on, the, on the bottom. You see this, 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 this gap here, which is marked here by the, by the arrows. Uh, this is the raw volume. As you can see, the corrected volume does not show this problem anymore. On the right side, you see the aligned MRI data set. This is the final optically balanced reconstructed volume at 20 micron resolution. So the major bottleneck is, of course, the cost of the, the, cost of the manual repairs of the section. So far, 20% are completely uh, repaired. Uh, the intermediate sections are still in processing. Uh, therefore, what we want to do, we want to complete the calculation of the automatic correction of the intermediate sections. Um, in, in that case is where this does not work very well. We have to correct it manually. Uh, this has also been done. Uh, from the McGill side, as far as the newly repaired sections become available, uh, these can be immediately added into the reconstruction pipeline to recursively improve the alignment. Um, oops, I'm sorry. Um, well, it's planned to train additional staff to perform the manual repairs to speed up the process. Um, this is also in, in focus of the new upcoming uh, Big Brain Free, where it is clear that uh, when we want to become a fast result, we have to re speed up the repair in that sense that um, more people have to repair sections. And it is planned that uh, a plenty part of, of the sections will be repaired in, in, in Jülich and also in addition, uh, a plenty part of, of sections will also be repaired in Montreal. Uh, and uh, it is planned that they are using the software that we have used, the section editor tool, which locks all the informations. And uh, with the locking, we can also try to apply the repairs that has been done on the 20 micron level to the, to the one micron level. Um, it is planned, oh, sir. Oh, come on. Uh, the current 100 micron alignment uh, seems to be from, from the resolution sufficient enough to, to, to compute a cortical surface extraction. Uh, this is one of the next steps that uh, Claude want to do. And uh, the final result will be then visualized with Atelier 3D. So the consideration of processing at one micron. Um, Well, the first step, the, the, the one micron data sets are, uh, uh, from, from Yuli side, are big TIFF data sets. Uh, in, in Montreal, they're using uh, MINK. So the first step is the data conversion from big TIFF to MINK from one to one to, at, at one micron and 20 micron. Uh, 
the repairment will still take place at 20 microns. Um, and it is planned that the uh, logging information can be used to replicate the operations on the one micron mink level. Of course, the processing of one micron sections, which can be as big as 12 gigabytes per section, cannot be used with standard tools on, 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 on simple computers. Therefore, uh, we have to use more and more supercomputing methods, not only by just uh, farming, just by parallel computing such big images. And of course, the visualization of, of the one micron isotropic data will also be a, a, a problem. And uh, hopefully we will work together with Roberto Toro at this, at this point uh, and to, to, to uh, convert the big TIFF from DCI uh, to the DCI format that is, that is used by MicroDraw. So of course, this project has not been possible without uh, help. Therefore, we want to special thank to, to uh, the ULIC team, to McGill, and to, uh, to uh, the Compute Canada team. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.